Now this is the Airbus A330 and it's powered by these Rolls-Royce engines. To be exact, the Rolls-Royce Trent 700. And this is the Grumman F14, a very different airplane with a very different engine too. And it's powered by the General Electric F110. It's a trouble fan. It has afterburners. And while the F14 is famously a very fast airplane, look at that. Look at that airplane rising up once we give full power. This thing can take off from aircraft carriers and can fly at supersonic speeds, especially if we get rid of the speed brakes. So I think it could be an interesting challenge to see what would happen if you put fighter jet engines like this one. Look at the speed. We're already at 300 knots. We can, we, we can practically just do a vertical takeoff. This is uh, F-14. Look at this. What happens if these engines go on a airliner? And that's what I've done. Now, is this something that makes sense? Absolutely not. Modern airliners would never be powered by a turbo fan engine like this. I mean, look at the size of it. It is absolutely small, but it says Navy on it, and it's cool and has afterburners. So let's see how fast this plane can go. Um, yeah. Now, the thing is, this thing will, this engine will use, like, a lot of fuel. Like, a lot of fuel. But look at this. We've got after, yes, afterburners work. They don't look as impressive, but they work. Yes, this has, of course, the very same engine specifics as the F-14 now. Let's see if it's able to power the A330 off the ground. This airplane is a bit confused. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Come on, F-14. We can hear the engine. It's very loud. Um, hello? Come on, come on! Now, come on. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go faster? You have literal afterburners and uh, everything. Uh, yes. Some people overestimate the power of those jet engines here. We're running at full power. Yeah, these engines are all barely fit enough to make this plane taxi. Well, it turns out the F-14 obviously is a lot smaller and lighter uh, than the A330. And, um, nope, it won't move or take off. Yeah, the truth is, the F-14 engine only produces 23,000 pounds of thrust with the afterburner on. Whereas the A-330 engine produces five times more than that. We would need five engines to even reach somewhat of the power the A-330 needs. Or we could take a look at the most powerful fighter jet in the world, the F-35. Powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-135, this one might look mighty, and it might look a lot more powerful, but well, this only produces 40,000 pounds of thrust as well, with afterburners engaged. I mean, it all kind of makes sense. The maximum takeoff weight of the F-35 is 30,000 kilograms, whereas the A-330 can weigh uh, a lot more, almost 10 times that. So yeah, you see, you, yeah. So we kind of have a choice now. Um, do we put three more engines on the A330 to make it actually go the same speed as it's supposed to? Or do we take a small plane? I'm hitting for the small plane. Look, I mean, if you're a billionaire and you don't care about fuel prices as well as uh, the environment or noise or anything and just want to look cool, like most billionaires, you might want to take your Cessna Citation X and upgrade that a little bit. Let's do a bit of an engine swap. Yes, everybody, why don't we do a little um, engine swap here? Kind of like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. This is absolutely stupid. Now, everybody, you admire my brilliance yet again. This is absolutely cool looking, though. We are dealing with the most incredible airplane in the world. All right, everybody, so my friends of jet travel. Now, of course, the F-14 engine is a little bit bigger than the, uh, oh my God, this looks absolutely stupid. Um, all right, here it is, and it's very shiny. The problem is it's so big, in fact, I think it goes into the cabin a little bit. Yeah, we can ignore that. Yeah, so it would kind of cut down on cabin space. I haven't really done the modeling properly. This is what it would look like. But, well, you know, we ha you have no idea how powerful this plane is now. Let's go full power. Yes. Yes, and just like the F-14, this airplane, even with parking brake on, takes off. Very, f oh my god, very quickly, Jesus Christ, here we go, look at that, we've created a very powerful version of the, look at, can you see that? We can do a vertical takeoff right there. Now, turning on realistic G effects, so that the airplane falls apart if we over G, probably is kind of scary, but this is fine, look at this. Wow, this airplane is accelerating so quick, we can't even, oh my god. Well, this has gone brilliantly, this test, hasn't it? I'm a big fan. You know what they say, I never disappoint. Look at this. I just want to stand behind the airplane and just have a look at the sound here. Full power. Yes! Crunchy and munchy. We can. This looks absolutely stupid, but look at this. We were able to take out without any problems. Like that. 
full power. And the Zerg Lane has so much power, in fact, that we can't really give full power all the time. Because otherwise, the plane would just oh, fly up vertically. Oh, my. Stop doing that. Stop pulling up. Come on, all is well. Yes, yeah, stop going vertical. This is fine. This is just fine. Okay, just a little bit of power. You can go fast. Now, I wonder how long, uh, how much fuel this airplane uses. It's quite a lot. Flight time, maximum one hour and 30 minutes. Kind of like the flight time of like a fighter jet, a general. Now, the biggest problem is that this is kind of a pointless design because this plane won't really go supersonic anyway. We all know once you reach close to supersonic speeds, you need special wings, you know, delta wings. You need a special nose in order to actually break through the sound barrier because just right at the sound barrier mark, that's where the air gets really tough. You need the airplane to slice through it. This airplane won't be able to slice through it. You know what I mean? But I won't deny that this plane is obviously much faster. Look at this. We can reach very high altitude very quickly. Jesus. And well, this airplane can fly at very high altitude as well. Look at that. We're now at what? 50,000 feet to the point where it's probably rather the pressurization system that kind of gives up. Now, shut up, master warning. Look at this. But look, here we uh, actually have a problem. We're at 55,000 feet, but we're still at Mach 0.8 or barely Mach 0.9. This plane is barely any faster than the normal F. F. Oh, citation next. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. It's going faster. It's going faster. Can we reach the speed of sound, please? Can we do? No, we can't. The autopilot is a little bit overwhelmed with the massive amount of power we have. It's like, what the? I don't know what it's doing. Let's go ahead and get rid of it now. Mm, no, nah, no supersonic speed here. No super. We might want to try spawning up higher into the air, like 70,000 feet. Here, the air is much thinner. So, uh, no. So supersonic speed above Mach 0.9 or something doesn't really work. Also, the instruments can't really cope with whatever we're doing here. Maximum altitude that is indicated 60,000. So this is absolutely useless. There's generally no improvement other than maybe runway performance and climb performance. In fact, we've definitely made the plane somewhat worse because something that the F-14 or almost all fighter jets don't have is reverse thrust. So... No reverse thrust on this plane, which can suck a little bit. Another thing is, I've just noticed the idle power of the F-14 is quite high, so it is really hard to lose speed here. So this airplane won't stop very well, I reckon, at all. So like, when we land here now, this is gonna be absolutely stupid. All right, there you go. Try to stop, which isn't really possible at all. We just overrun into death. Great. But we can, oh, we can we can do a quick go around though. Come on, full power. Oh, we've died. Uh, but look, look, I mean, see it in a positive light. We probably will be able to take off here. Uh, the Bourj Al Arab. Yeah, uh, I think. I hope. Uh, let's go full power. Yes. Look at this and release brakes. Right. So, but thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. This is hopeless. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.